Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of The Pantry Party Show with your host, at DJ Blattner. Today's show is going to be amazing. We have at Tiffany.Louise with us today, a relationship coach and a high vibes girl. So, without further ado, shall we get this party started? Woo, ooh, 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 party time. Okay, that's right, the rock girl party time. All right, here we go. Hey guys, nice to see you. Uh, it is a beautiful day in Chicago and uh, cannot get enough of um, what this next guest is gonna be bringing us. Tiffany.Louise is her handle. Uh, she is a relationship coach uh, and I'll tell you, uh, she has good vibes all around. I mean, just good vibes. So let's get her in, let's get this pot it started. Okay, Tiffany. And we have the disco ball to welcome her as usual. Oh my gosh. With anticipation. <laughs> Tiffany! Woo! <laughs> I love the disco ball. I knew you would. I knew you would, babe. I'm um, feeling I, it. I can't thank you enough for uh, deciding that you were going to be a guest on the Pantry Party Show because when I took a step back and I thought about you know, like, I just, I want to be surrounded by high vibes, right? And it's like, oh my gosh, I need more Tiffany in my life. I need more you. And I feel like all I'm doing is a pantry party right now, like every day for like 47 days straight. So it's never been more relevant in my life. It's the truth. I mean, that's how this show started is basically knowing that people are going to the store less, but they're cooking more. And nobody wants to waste anything. So how can we do that? And um, one of the things as I was sort of researching your bio, I mean, you know, we're friends, but I don't know that we've ever really talked shop and business so much, you know? No. And so I was researching, I knew that you had a background as a uh, licensed clinical social worker, but I don't know that I've ever seen, and I love this, is that you really are out there as a relationship coach. And, and listen, this is what surprised me well, mind blowing, mind blowing. A relationship coach, not just with other people, but with yourself. Yeah. 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 Well, I think that's what a therapist is. You know, as someone who worked for like 17 years and, and with therapist in my title or counselor in my title. And I, and I realized that a lot of what I'm teaching people, no matter if it's an addiction treatment center or a mental health, is how to relate to themselves differently. And then the more that I really saw what people was, were coming to me for is the, the single greatest predictor of our well-being is the relationships that we have. And I didn't learn how to do healthy relationships. It was something I had to study and mess up at and learn better. And I just see that what we are all craving is to feel connected. And we, a lot of us just don't have the tools. Like you teach people so brilliantly the tools in the kitchen to nourish their body. One thing that my career has turned into is teaching people the tools to connect meaningfully, to set boundaries, to what words to say, because we don't know the scripts. So yeah, I mean, I've been doing it really for the last two decades, but now I'm stepping more fully into saying, hey, I help people with their relationships. And cause that's what everyone keeps coming to me for. So I'm like, well. I gotta, I gotta clap over that because I'll tell you that was, Seeing it on your bio, I was like, yes. Like, you know how you just, you know when something is so right and it's like, whoa, that's so right. But I, I really like your differentiator because I feel like there's people who are out there that say they're a relationship coach and, you know, they're being like a matchmaker or whatever. Yeah. But like, you're really talking about this relationship with yourself and others. I just, I think that's so special. And I just wanted to make sure I publicly told you, like, I think that you hit the jackpot because that is so you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And it does. It flows. It's the thing that I think we teach what we have to learn. And <laughs> girl, I had to learn it. I had to learn it. Um, but now I know it. And now I have the healthy relationships to show for it. And I just want people to have that. I want the people who are confused and dating the same not great kind of people and struggling in their marriage um, to feel like there's hope because I believe it, so. I love that, and you got a lot of heart. Everybody's given hearts, hearts, hearts. We got a lot of claps and hearts. We got a lot of hearts um, at Get Roped. Thanks for the compliment, girl. Thanks for showing up. Um, so I, I love that, I think it's great. 
And in addition, I knew that last year you uh, released a book, yeah. but I feel like I didn't really get just how beautiful it was until I was sort of researching, again, for the show, uh, researching it, is This Year I Will is your book. Yes. I should have one down here, but it's upstairs in my office. But yes, it's a guided journal, and it came out last year right around this time. And it's really the steps that I have taken in my work with clients, it's repetitive. And the idea is it's something that you do every week for, an, for a year or longer to track yourself, to notice where you're making progress and where you're stalling. Because the stalling and the blocks is all that juicy goodness for how we heal and grow. To get clear on what our values are, because I, one thing that I think we think is that we're living in alignment with our values. But truly, if a lot of us check in and look at what we're doing, okay, I say my family is the most important, but am I really showing up in that way in my life? I say that my health is the most important. Does my life reflect that? So a big chunk of the beginning part of the book helps people get clear what matters to me, what would my life look like if I lived that way? Because a lot of times, as you know, we chase a lot of goals that we think and we hope will make us happy. And one thing that I've learned working with people with insane amounts of success is that if you, if you get there, but you don't have the things that really mean something and matter, you, you don't end up, you end up feeling disappointed. And so the book is really aligned. It's, it's a self-discovery tool. Who are you? What matters? What would your life look like? And then the, the accountability to track yourself as you make that change. Uh, so that's that. what it's about. It's on Amazon, Target.com. Yeah. yeah, it's on Amazon, Target, everywhere books are sold, really. And the, the, for me, I think the thing that I didn't realize is how interactive it is, right? So that, like you said, it's this sort of getting real with who you are, but also like manifesting. Like, I, you know, I love those, uh, like, uh, you know, getting clear about your uh, intentions. And it's just, it's really deep and fabulous. And I just, yeah. I, now I'm clamoring. And I thought to myself, you know, this year I will, a year can start at any time. A year no, doesn't yeah. start January 1st. Like this is a book that you could get any time. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think right now we're perhaps not all, but some people have a lot more time and we can use it to sort of tune out or we could use it to tune in. Um, I, I'll tell you, I've created a book and it's simple and it's digestible. I use it and I have discovered things about myself from using my own dang book. And um, so I do, I, I, I'm not applauding myself. I'm sharing this because I really believe that anytime we take a tool that costs us next to nothing um, and we take time to center, our lives can change. So whether you do it with a plain piece of paper or my journal, I don't think it matters. Um, but yeah, I think now is a time where we can really get to know ourselves, our defense mechanisms up, our coping mechanisms are up, all of our feelings, our anxieties, it's up. And we get, we, we have a chance to take a look at it right now. I love it. Something you said, I, you know what, it's, uh, I try, I'm trying to tuck it away in the back of my mind and I can't tuck it away. It's like, I just, I have to say this right now. It's like, I have heard maybe a million times people say like, are you living in alignment with your values? Okay. I've heard that a million times, but you know how like you got to hear it like that millionth and first time and somehow some way somebody says it in a way that it like hooks. Yeah. That just happened to me right now talking to you. It just mm -hmm. hooked that I was like, Oh my gosh, what that means is, you know, how would you like to spend your days? What matters to you? And are you actually spending your days doing that? So if it really matters to me to show up to an audience, am I spending more of my days watching reality TV instead of like showing up and doing those things or whatever it is? Like, yeah. I just, I don't know. Yeah. Just that, that moment of you saying that right now, Tiffany, is like, it totally hooked for me. Mm -hmm. So I love that. I, love I think that. that is just so, it's so beautiful. You have a way with words and just like, slowing down like when you talk it is slow and meaningful oh, you know thank you sometimes i feel like the energizer bunny and like i'm like slow your roll so that means a lot to me yes so it's coming from the master of public speaking for real well you know what i have uh, my husband always says this and i love this phrase okay and he says i overuse it now but it's called word salad. Like people stand up and just say a bunch of words and they kind of don't mean anything. They're just, it's a word salad. 
And so for you, I don't know that I mean talking slow, like in terms of speed or just in terms of meaningful. Oh, you know well, what I mean? Maybe that's more what I meant. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you, girl. Well, absolutely. So uh, congratulations on all that you're doing, this idea of focusing on relationships, your book. This year I will. I think it's all great. And the reason why I was really drawn to you for Pantry Party is that I have a true belief that if people show up in the world like you do, right? You show up very bright, very willing to build each uh, people up and yourself, each other, all this, right? That you have this positivity about you. You have to be doing something high vibe in your kitchen. Like I just, I know that presenting this high vibe has to be fueled with high vibe. Yeah. So I was like, girl, I kind of want some inspiration from you. And like, what are you eating over there for all your high vibes? So for the pantry party episode today, do you have yes. a, some sort of meal that you've either been making a lot during this quarantine or something new that you want to try or something that you have to make because something is like going bad in your fridge? Well, that's what's happening. Cause right now about the only place that I can get delivery from is Costco. So I get an abundance of vegetables. So every so often I will just have to like take a look at everything and I'm like, what kind of freaking soup am I going to make? Um, to use up all of this before it goes bad. So I just did make something. I've been making a chicken or a vegetable, roasted vegetable tortilla soup. So that's all done. But one of the things that I thought that I think I get the most comments on when I share in my stories is I love making salmon. Salmon for me is so fast, so quick, kind of foolproof compared to other fish. Um, on, an, on a day where I'm working, my, well, my husband cooks some stuff for him that I don't really eat, but we don't really want him trying to cook the regular food. It's, it's best that it falls in my lap. So on days where I'm working all day, I want something that start to finish is like 15 to 20 minutes. And one, one thing that I've always loved about you is like, you know, where can you mix in the pre-made foods with the, the fresh produce? And so things like that, I think yes. are healthy shortcuts. Girl. Healthy shortcuts. Ball. I mean, because when you have those things ready to go, what I find is if I know I can get something that's tasty and delicious and healthy for me done in 15 minutes, I'll grab through that before I grab five strings of cre or five string cheeses, or I grab the thing that's just satiating me in the moment, but isn't conscious. Um, so you have always modeled this for me really well. And one of the things that I've been making is a ton of salmon and I have two sort of like toppings that I go to, but I make this, Dijon brown sugar salmon that is done from 15 minutes and a delicious meal. And that's been something that's on my rotation right now because anything that's that few ingredients, I can usually count on getting these things. Cause a lot of times I don't know about a lot of you right now, I'm ordering things and it's not coming. Oh yeah. And yeah. we have, you know, um, I have a history of asthma, so I'm just trying to stay out of any potentially dangerous places. Um, so I'm reliant on those beautiful workers who are delivering food right now. I'm so freaking grateful for them, but I can't, my, my pantry is like whatever I can get right now. Can we see inside a pantry? Yeah, for your yeah. sure. Well, here, like, let's take a look at my fridge. I mean, okay. I'm going to be freaking real here. Everything yeah, was in my know. fridge, but I like lined it up a little bit for you. Okay, you know? Um, so let's see, can we see here? I made like. Uh, egg salad, Vital Farms, my favorite egg. So I made an egg salad a couple days ago. These are batches of my um, tortillas, roasted vegetable soup. Well, I'll tell you, oh, hey, Tiffany, yeah. uh, when you said that about getting a lot of vegetables from Costco and you were like, you know, I'm looking around and then I think, what kind of soup am I going to make? Is that a, a, a usual thing? So you have tortilla soup right there. Is that a usual thing you think about making with vegetables? Yeah. Soup? Yeah, all the time. I'm a big soup person. And part of the reason I love it is because it captures, as you know, all of the nutrients, right? Like yeah. the things that cook off go into the broth. And for me, it, and even like, I'll, I, I kind of lose interest in soup in the middle of the summer, but yeah. for the rest of the year, it's, it's a thing for me. I love like a great chicken noodle soup. I love bone broth. I love all the herbs I get to put in. I love that it becomes a melting pot of all the vegetables instead of just one side of a vegetable. Yeah. I just feel like I get so much more nutrition. Fine. And I also appreciate
appreciate your truth of you might be a soup person, but not in the deep. No, either like in summer. August, I'm not craving a soup. Preach, preach. All right, sorry to interrupt, but I no, was that's okay. So get a soup idea. I always have eggs, always vital proteins. These freaking pickles, I'm obsessed with. Anybody a Bubby's fan? Yes. Okay. So yes. the fermentation because these don't have vinegar, so they actually give you some of that good gut um, probiotic situation, which I'm always working on. Do you just snack on them or do you yeah. like make? Yeah, snack on so them. So we're a family. I have, I have pulled Luke into my love for the snack plate. <laughs> so a snack plate is life. And we probably have one every day. And, it's, and I've created a monster because now every day he's like, hey, babe, can I get a snack plate? I'm like, how about you get yourself a snack plate? And then it's like this thing. But I, I'm from Wisconsin. So while I eat very, very healthy, your girl loves her cheese. And that ain't going away. <laughs> It's in the DNA. It's, it's in my and DNA. I and I, I seriously worry. Like, I I sit here and I go, please, Lord, don't let me be lactose intolerant. Like, it's all I've got. I don't drink alcohol. I don't drink caffeine. I don't have chocolate anymore. If you take my cheese, I don't know what I've got left. So <laughs> I've got, like, big blocks. Let's, you know, move past the healthy stuff. But big Costco blocks of, like, good sharp cheddar. Yeah. Um, and then this is my favorite. Just so you know, I'm hijacking your your meal tip. You know how you were like, oh, your uh, honey brown sugar salmon. You just oh, yeah. got hijacked by the Pantry Party Show, and this episode is going to be called the Snack Plate. Perfect. You've got to teach us how to make snack plates. Okay, so back to my pickle argument. These are the best crackers I have ever had in my freaking life, like they're ever. Good. Yeah. So they're so delicious. They've got that little garlic and onion. I'm mostly gluten free for a thyroid issue. Um, uh, hey girl, Erica, hey Erica, so Erica knows I love my snacks. snacks. So I actually, funny story, the other day, swallowed one of these without chewing them and got it lodged in my freaking esophagus and had to go to the doctor. Yes, true story. Wait, are, no, no, no. Are you serious? Because I was snacking, I was making a snack plate and I didn't chew. So if you were, word to the wise, if you are making a snack plate, chew your crackers. Um, <laughs> And I think Erica go. loves this story. She loves. She story. knows it. It happened to her the same week it happened to me. She swallowed like a burger and it got stuck, and she had to go to the doctor too. Okay, Erica, Tiffany, I would like to share my story. My story is I swallowed a plastic prong of a fork eating too fast once. So although it didn't get lodged in my throat with an emergency room visit like yours, it is a great um, aggressive reminder to chew and to be mindful when you're and eating. To be mindful. Yes. Hell yes. Yes. Safe snack, please. A hundred percent. So, so now I, my, my mom's like, are you going to stop eating those crackers? Cause everyone knows has, I have an obsession. I'm like, absolutely not. I'm no. just going to practice mindfulness. Like I preach. So good snack. Okay. We'll pivot. Good snack plate. These yep. crackers, a must, a good cheese. We are a big fan of like a sharp white nicely aged cheddar in this family. I will cut up those Bubby's pickles. Nice little slice of that. I will put some olives. This is another Ooh. one that we're a big fan of olives and you know, a nice organic olive. And, what's that, and what time of day is this snack plate? Is this like, oh, it, we don't discriminate. Like we allow the snack plate to tell us when it's time. Oh. So, <laughs> We let it, we just let it speak to us. So it might so be an not afternoon. like always like four o'clock in the afternoon. No. Oh. no. And sometimes there's two a day. I'll be honest. Like sometimes there's an after, you know, an afternoon snack plate. Yes. Olives. Thank you. The rock girl. And then there's sometimes an evening one. And my husband is a little lactose intolerant. So he's like, you've just created a monster. And then we have this thing where can I keep the cheese in the house because he eats it like a bottomless pit and I eat it more in moderation. So I'm like, I, am I supposed to hide the cheese from you? And right now it's <laughs> Wait, quarantine. So. actual like best-selling book, like who hid my cheese or something like that. Who moved my cheese? Who um, moved my cheese? I have a question. Yeah. Would you ever do a snack plate as a meal or is this like you're a three meal a day girl and you might have one or two snack plates in a day? Like what's the, what's so the vibe? Of I'll it? be, I'll be honest. I don't have one or two a day. He probably, he has okay. at least a snack plate a day, but like I'll have a little bit of all of those ingredients maybe on their own. I'm a grazer. I'm not a more breakfast, lunch and dinner girl. And it's simply because I just, I do intuitive eating. So I eat, and I can do this because I work from home and I have the ability to. When I was working 
in an agency job, it's not easy to eat intuitively when you only have this amount of time to, right. you know, eat and you have to plan and prepare. So I really acknowledge that. I think some of, when people talk about intuitive eating, it's sometimes from a place of privilege. And I get that. So for me, I live in a place where I can hop downstairs and grab things when my body is telling me. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll have a little bit of crackers and cheese or I'll have some olives or I'll grab a pickle and I'll chop that up. And then I'll, we usually put some fruit in there. We'll have like, you know, organic blackberries or raspberries or apples and peanut butter. It's like, you know, you want to see all of the textures, all of the flavors you want. Salty, sweet, cheese, cracker. That's, I think, what makes a good snack plate in my Okay, I, I'm loving this. Okay, <laughs> if we had to though give it, it would be uh, the crackers that you enjoy, a cheese, pickles, olives, some kind of fruit, and is it go on a, oh, what'd you say? Nuts sometimes. I'll do like pecans or oh, cashews. Nuts. I like a good, you know. I like this. Uh, do you thing. put it on a plate or yeah. does it go on like a mini? Oh, it's a plate. Yeah, like I'll just put it on like a nice white plate or like I'm, I'm a big fan of charcuterie boards. Like I'll go all out when it's like time, when it's a party and all the different, you know, rosemary. And I, I think that's just because I'm a grazer and because I love to eat a variety of flavors in each meal. For me, what I found, and it's just what works for me. I'm not afraid of fat. I'm not afraid of avocado. I'm not afraid of cheese. Because when I eat that way. I'll give you a disco ball for that girl. Disco when I, ball. Yes. When I eat that way, I feel satisfied. Yeah. And satisfied is good for my mental health. It's good for my mindfulness when it comes to food. Because I'm present to the meal. I feel nourished by it. I feel like food that is nutrition based but is delicious is like one of my greatest joys on the planet. And so when I can feel satisfied, I don't, I don't feel satisfied by a plain salad with a piece of broccoli and a cut up bell pepper. It doesn't. And I think my body historically grew to have that healthy adaptation. I mean, there's been fascinating research that they show that if you show a woman groceries in a grocery store, her brain will remember where the more full fat option was for survival. So I think that my feeding my mind, those and my body foods that feel fully satisfying, then I'm full, then I'm not rushing back to the kitchen, trying to like eat another half fat, low cal bullshit cookie. Amen. Hey girl. Amen. It's, it's the issue that people act like hunger is only physical and it's yes. like, no, there's yes. two hungers that you need to solve every time you eat it here. Yes. And it's here. Yes. And so it's like, I call that the health nut and the wild child. They always have to be playing together I nice that. every time you eat a meal, every time you snack. I just, I, I love that uh, idea so much, though, when people are publicly speaking about it, of like, you know, because I mean, you are, if people see you doing fitness things and doing these things, and you know what the assumption is, is like, yeah. oh, this girl eats pepper salads all day long, you know? And it's like, no, listen, no. that doesn't work. Like what really works so that you are joyful in this world, show up in the big, bold, bright way that you are, is that you're giving yourself that big, bold, bright feeling in your food. I love that. Yes. And we just were at that amazing conference in Chicago the last time we all weren't social distancing together where you were speaking and, and the, the psych our psychiatrist who was there and I, I eat for health. Like I think, how is this serving my brain? And I, even more so since what he shared, you know, yeah. how does this salmon feel, feed my brain and how do these olives and how, like, I, I think that we think we can starve our brain of fats and like that, that satisfied feeling and it ain't good for us. I, I know for me, I am more physically fit, much healthier now that I practice mindfulness. For me, when I become too obsessive, uh, my, my, my quality of life suffers. Um, when I become afraid of cheese being bad, I mean, this was many, many years ago. I'm like, who wants to live like that? Now, that doesn't mean that I numb out, leave my body, except for when I'm eating crackers and going to the emergency room. Um, <laughs> the time I'm rushed to the emergency room yes. crackers, and, and, uh, and uh, Vibe Collective says, yes, that she crashed her adrenals doing that, like getting too obsessed. 
It's like, here's, here's what I say, Tiffany, you got to care about what you put in your body, but not obsess, right? And yes. that's exactly what you're saying is yes. you're like, I care, I'm invested in putting good stuff in because I know it gives me what I need to go out in the world, but I'm not going to do it in an obsessive way where I'm make, villainizing sweet goodness cheese. <laughs> no, sweet. And it is, it's the nectar of my life. So and it isn't for everybody, right? But for me, limiting because I want to look a certain way creates the opposite effect. So it is, it, I, people are shocked. And I'm glad you bring this up because people, are, you know, Eric, if she's still on here, you know, I'm, a mac, I'm the mac and cheese girl. I make a Carney Wilson recipe and I have been for like 15 years that is blow your socks off, like more cheese than noodles. I don't eat that every day. I don't even eat it as much as I used to because before I'd eat the whole pan and then be sick for two days. But I, I do eat a lot and a variety of foods and I eat mostly healthy because I like it and I find a way to like it and I find a way to make it interesting and flavorful. But if I, when I wasn't, I mean, I think I looked and felt worse. Oh, um, so it's interesting. We're afraid to let go of the reins. We're afraid to enjoy food and be present to it. But when we do that, we have everything we want. We have our health and we have, we enjoy our life. Right. It's so true. You know, you're so big on with your um this year I will and just everything that you do is your why, right? Like yeah. finding out like what is your driving force in your heart and what do you think that is for you and eating and getting it right how you have it right right now? Like what's what's your why of of why do you care about it? So I care because I've gotten to a place talking about relationships, talking about anxiety, anything that I've healed from. I've gotten to a place where I understand, and I think we're facing this right now with the pandemic. We are facing the reality of how little is out of our control, right? So for me, I have a value of controlling for what I can, which is how I think and how I act. And I have a value of making my life easier where I can, because my life has been hard enough in many ways that I can't control for. You can't control for illness, some illness or death or things, I can control how I nourish myself. I can control if I stopped drinking caffeine because I had headaches and felt anxious. I can control, you know, feeding myself nourishing food that gives me energy to do the work that I want to do. So I have a value of making my life easier on myself because I've gotten to a place of self-love where I just want to take care of me um, and I don't want to have to suffer unnecessarily. So that is, I think, where food comes in terms of self-care. But it also comes from, as I grew up with a mother who, as a single mother, had us around the dinner table. I didn't actually know we were as poor as we were because my mother cooked. She was a brilliant cook. My teenage friends would come over and we'd sit around the dinner table and talk for hours and hours and hours. So I grew up with food as a way to connect and a way to nourish and a way to show your love. So it's definitely one way that I do like my heart when my husband is like, mm, that's so good. I'm like, Oh, like, I just feel happy and connected. So those are the layers. I think it, of course it is forward. though. Of course yeah. it is because it all goes back to your biggest why of this idea of relationship. This food is self relationship. Yeah. Food is a relationship with others and community. Like, no, of course. It's, yeah. That is your why. I yeah. love it. Well, oh, full, full circle moment there. Yeah. It's a full circle moment. So do you care that uh, your uh, whole pantry party episode got hijacked by your no. magic of a snack plate? Because no, because I think I, I just grabbed what was easiest, quite frankly. And that's, I mean, a snack plate, salmon isn't every day. A snack plate is every day. <laughs> so. I love, I, but the thing that's so beautiful about it is it's really anything that you have around. So, you know, what are the crackers you have? If you don't have those, what do you have? Do you have tortilla people? chips? Don't have, so, right. Yes. Yeah. Cheese. You don't have a put the leftover salmon from the night before on it. Whatever. The idea is that is a snack plate. Anything goes, especially in quarantine. This makes yeah. a lot of sense. And it's satisfying. Like we talked about on every level, I get sweet and, you know, salty and it feels like I've had an experience and I've not deprived myself. So, oh my gosh. Hey, do you have any pictures on your Instagram of the, uh, the said snack plate type of thing? I don't think I do, but I'll, I can scroll through like my archives of my Insta stories or I'll take one of the snack plate that has it tonight, you know? <laughs> yeah, if you if you do, I would not mind seeing it in your story at some point because I, I'm so inspired by this. Now, let me let me say, obviously, I want more Tiffany Dot Louise 
Um, where can everybody go who's watching the pantry party now and later go to get more of all the magic that you are? I'm Tiffany.Louise on Instagram. Y'all can come say hi. And I am TiffanyLouise.com and my website. So that, I mean, that's easy enough. And Erica yep. has a fabulous idea. I have a highlight sure. of all your snack plates. Thank you, Erica. I would appreciate a highlight of all her snack plates, too, so I could just click on there and see them all breeze by. I love it. Um, hey, at Tiffany.Louise, you are magic. Thank you so much for being uh, on the Pantry Party Show, and uh, can't wait to see you at IRL. I love you. Thank you for having me. Bye, snack baby. plates for life. <laughs> Bye. 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 That was another successful episode of the Pantry Party Show. I'll tell you what, we got super inspired with the pl uh, snack plate episode, right? I mean, legit. What a fun idea. I hijacked it. She wanted to talk about some delicious uh, mustard ground sugar salmon. Sounds good. I think we should make that. But I really think that we should all lean into this snack plate with the things that we have, you know, about to go bad in our fridge, the veggies, uh, the, the fruits, uh, like she said, cheese, olives, nuts. I love this idea. Anyway, we are in Tuesday. So we have three more days this week of the Pantry Party Show at noon, Central Time. Uh, so make sure that you, you know, have it in your calendar. Set alarms. Tell your friends. Come to the Pantry Party Show uh, for some creativity, some inspiration in your pantry. So until next time, sending you high immunity vibes, big love, and lots and lots of kisses. Mm -hmm.